Hey everyone, as always, welcome to the dojo where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. Today we are going to continue on with our basic tutorial of Gary Grigsby's War in the East. And today we are going to tackle support units. And when I talk to people about this game, uh, when people tell me why they gave the game up or didn't progress into the game, uh, oftentimes support units come up and the confusion around how support units work in this game. Um, I'm not going to lie to you and say it's simple. It's not simple. But I think uh, given a little bit of time here and going over it, it'll become pretty clear to you. And then when you start playing it really becomes intuitive uh, but i hope to give you all the building blocks that you need to start understanding how support units work in the game so what are support units well the manual defines support units as single purpose independent battalions brigades and regiments and if your eyes glazed over that's fine in <laughs> layman's terms what support units are are units in the game that are smaller than divisions, okay? So regiments, brigades, battalions are all smaller than a division, generally in the way that armies are set up now and back then. Uh, it would be three brigades or three regiments would make up a division. And then companies make up the brigades or the regiments. So they are just smaller units, okay? Now, when we first started talking about this game and in this tutorial, I talked about how the game is modeled on the divisional level. So all of these counters, for the most part, that you see out on the board are divisions. Well, what do you do with units that are smaller than divisions? That's what we're going to go into. That's what support units are. And if you kind of take the grand overview, overview what support units are is they do, they do one thing really well, and you can use them to boost or perk or whatever word you want to use, buff if you want, divisions. So when divisions go to do something, these support units can either be attached to them or they can be in a headquarters within five hexes of them, and they can be committed to battle with that division, and they can buff, perk, bonus, boost. Hey, you know, let's, let's go all the way through the adjectives. They can pump up that division for their special task, all right? And so what kind of support units are there? Uh, there are essentially five or six major types. Sometimes they're called different things, but they all fit into those five or six major types. And so let's talk about what those are. So I'm going to go someplace that I know has quite a few support units. Um, I do believe down here, it's the 24th. 24th has a good number. Um, maybe it's this one. Yeah, these, these kind of have the same number. Now, when you click on a headquarters unit, and I mean this for every headquarters unit in the game, you'll see over here either attach support, or if you click that, attach units, okay? And this is generally where you're going to find all of the support units where it says attach support. But you can click back and forth. What's attached units? Units are the uh, units that this headquarters directly commands. So we talked about command last time. This is the 47th Panzer Corps. 47th Panzer Corps headquarters, the Corps, has four divisions underneath it. The 17th Panzer, 18th Panzer, 29th Motorized, and 167th Infantry Division. Kind of a real mishmash there. Uh, but there are four divisions underneath, each worth two command points. And you see it's commanding eight, and it can command eight. So we talked about all that last time. Well, if you click on that again, you see attach support. And it's in these headquarter units, in these the container that is the headquarter unit, whether it be the core headquarters, the army headquarters, the army group headquarters, or all the way up to OKH is where you're generally going to find these support units. All right. So let's talk about the different types. 
There is the main type to really think about. There are two or three, really. But the main one to focus on, artillery. All right, so you see artillery here. But gun battalions are also artillery. Howitzers are, are also considered artillery. Okay, and so um, you got several different kinds of artillery. Uh, I was just looking. I think there's another one. Rockets or uh, groups are considered artillery, but we'll get to those in a minute. Werfers are rockets, okay? And they're like artillery. But we can click on each one of these. So let's go to this gun battalion. We'll talk about Flammen Panzers here in a minute. I just love that name, the Flam Panzer. Uh, let's go to this gun battalion. You can click on each one of these support units, and it will bring up a whole card for the unit, just like you can for a division. It brings it up. It tells you it's TOE. You can set the TOE if you want. It's got its own morale. It tells you whether it's motorized or non-motorized, how many vehicles it needs to move around, its direct headquarters, uh, the headquarters even above that, and then you know it's got supply needs, ammo needs. It's just like the division card, okay? With that said, if you never ever look at the back of one of these cards ever again, you can play the game just fine. The, the game, again, is modeled to the division level. That's what's really important. You can attach these onto headquarters to help their divisions or attach them to divisions directly, and we're going to talk about both of those things, um, to boost them. So you don't have to know. All you have to know is generally what they are and this is the artillery symbol um, so you see it's the 40 uh, the 422nd gun battalion okay there are 12 105 millimeter field guns in this battalion and then it has a support element right because to keep these 12 field guns going you probably have guys that need to get the uh, ammo in make sure everybody's fed etc okay so that's support that's always what support is it's kind of uh, an abstraction in this game uh, although i will say a game model to the division level to get all the way down to support's pretty impressive but you can click even further down let's go look at the 105 millimeter field gun and so i say if you're if you're new to this game it's worth a spin around these support units to see exactly what you're dealing with 105 millimeter field gun all right it's considered heavy artillery what's heavy artillery generally generally it's artillery that has uh, less range but more of a punch that's a generalization but heavy artillery usually will pack more of a punch, doesn't have as much range. Why do you want artillery? Well, if you're on the attack, you know, it's just like you would want cannon in a Napoleon game or a Civil War game. Artillery on the Eastern Front, uh, for instance, the Soviets would bombard with artillery for sometimes as long as 24 hours or even longer before launching attacks. Uh, because it softens, I mean, they're just big, massive guns, right? 105 millimeter field gun is going to do a lot of damage wherever those sh those shells land. And so this is artillery to soften up uh, whatever you're trying to attack. Or even on the defense, it can be used to soften up the attackers. They're just big guns, all right? So each field gun takes eight men to operate. And you can go into all these other stats, but when it comes down to it, you know, each field gun has uh, one 105 millimeter. Um, you know, we're down to the individual device here. Eight, eight men, eight rifles, you know, I mean, you're down to that level. But really, just remember, the 422nd Gun Battalion is artillery, and it's got 12 guns. Okay? And you don't even have to look at that. What you can look at is, you can go through here and say, oh, great i need some artillery here's an artillery battalion here's a gun battalion here's a howitzer battalion what's the 150 millimeter howitzer look like there it is uh it's a big big gun <laughs> so that's that's what artillery generally is going to be so artillery is the first main uh i guess you would say type of support unit okay 
The second big type of support unit um, is going to be, well, let's, do, let's go to anti-tank. Anti-tank would be the second big type that you really have to remember. And we'll see here, the Panzerjagers or Panzerjoggers. I don't speak German. You can tell me whether it's a Y or a J. Uh, you know, Jägermeister I've had before, so I know that sometimes a J is a Y. Uh, but let's call it Panzerjoggers, okay? They are anti-tank. How would I know that? Well, I can click on it, and I can see, if I click on here, it's a light tank destroyer, okay? And so... And you could also tell by this symbol. This is the the NATO anti-tank symbol. These are going to be good if you're out on the planes and you are expecting to see armor. Okay, if you're expecting the the Soviets to bring armor your way, you're going to want to have some anti-tank. That's what these things do. We can look at the picture again. They almost look like mini tanks, but really they're just mobile guns. And these guns are made to blow up tanks. Okay, so Panzer joggers, that's what I'm calling them, and I'm sticking with it. Um, hold on. Oh, shoot, I just moved my head course. Well, that's fine. We'll get them both at the same place. Uh, so that's anti-tank. That's the second big type. Uh, and then you have some random ones, like the Flom Panzer, but we'll get to that in a minute. Let's go to, did I click on this one? Ah, uh, here's, here's a nice one, the 12th Corps. The 12th Corps headquarters has, as attached support right now, it has two gun battalions, four howitzers. Uh, so these are all artillery. And generally, they will be listed together, right? So you can see, these are all the artillery. Then you get to Panzerjager. That's uh, anti-tank. Okay, the third major type then is flak. What is flak? It's anti-aircraft. And uh, you can see one, two, three, this has four flak battalions, or three flak battalions and a company. Okay, um, so let's go look at one of those. Uh, in this mixed flak battalion, and I'll tell you what mixed means here in a minute, it's got eight 37 millimeter anti-aircraft guns, 14 20 millimeters, 21 20 millimeters, and 12 88 millimeters. And this 88 millimeter gun is the reason it's called mixed flak battalion, because all of these other things would make up a normal anti-aircraft battalion. But the 88, at some point along the way, some German soldier was probably getting ready to be overrun by tanks or you know the armor was coming he wasn't expecting it and he took his 88 millimeter anti-aircraft gun and pointed it at the tank and it and blew it sky high and at that point uh and i'm totally making this story up i don't know how they figured this out but i assume it was something like that at some point the germans figured out their 88 millimeter anti-aircraft guns were also their maybe best anti-tank guns as well. Uh, they were deadly efficient on the Eastern Front with 88 millimeters against Soviet armor. And so this is a mixed flak battalion. This mix tells you it not only does anti-aircraft, which is, the, this is the NATO symbol for anti-aircraft, it also does uh, anti-tank work for you as well, okay? Um, and so that's mixed. Now let's look at light flak battalion. Again, anti-aircraft. You've got this gun, this gun. There's 19 of these, four of these. It's got some support. What do these look like? This is anti-aircraft. Okay, that's what that is. Now this reminds me, since that was on tracks, see how this says motorized? Generally, you're anything that you're going to send with the panzers so this would be a good support unit to send with the panzers why because it's motorized if it's not motorized already it's going to take extra trucks to move the stuff to keep up with the panzers so you're going to want to look and see if um, these support units are motorized or not and it may make a difference if they're not motor not motorized you may want to keep them with infantry divisions. And again, as we get into the episode, I'll show you how to get them to those divisions or to the headquarters that you want them to be at. Um, but for now, 
uh, let's stay going through the main types. So we've got artillery, we've got anti-tank, the mixed are both anti-aircraft and anti-tank. The flak, the, the pure flak ones are all anti-aircraft. So let's look at this flak company. We've got a 20 millimeter anti-aircraft gun. Okay. And we've got a number of those. We've got four. We've got this gun that we looked at before. Uh, sometimes they're quads, they're called quad flak, you know, and they're, they're four guns that fire anti-aircraft, but those are all anti-aircraft, and that's the third major type. As a matter of fact, those are really the three major types that you need to really be thinking about. Now, there are others, and we're going to get into them in a minute, um, but if you focus on artillery, anti-tank, and flak or anti-aircraft, that's good, okay? Because you're gonna take those support units and you're gonna move them around to where they're needed. So take a, a core or an army, you know, one step up the chain, that is under a lot of aircraft fire. The Soviets, the Soviet Air Force, for whatever reason, is really bringing in a lot of air support in their quadrant, in their section, well, you're going to want to get more flak there and run more anti-aircraft. Let's say that you're down near Kharkov or places where tanks can just roam free down in the south. Well, you're going to want to get more anti-tank battalions down there. Get them in there with your units, with your headquarters to run anti-tank missions. Let's say that you're trying to mount a big attack on Leningrad, Kiev, or just out here anywhere, you're going to be attacking the Soviets, you're probably going to want more artillery, right? And that's what these are, and they will buff up the, the divisions that you see on the board, the counters you see on the board are buffed up by these things that you don't, you will never see these on the map. They are attached to uh, your units, whether they be headquarters or divisions themselves, as we're going to get into. So let's talk about some of the other kinds that aren't as uh, plentiful, let's put it that way. One would be the Stugs. A Stug Battalion, what is a Stug? You see here, if it's called a Stug, that's fine. I call it a Stug. I have no idea. Uh, but I call these the Stugs. They have the anti-tank symbol, okay? They're really an assault gun, though. So this assault gun, can they f fire at tanks? Sure, they've got a 75 millimeter gun on them, uh, so they're no, they're not nothing. Now you may look at that picture and say, "Oh, well, it's a tank. It's not a tank. It's uh, it doesn't have the armor of a tank. It's uh, really a a mobile gun. Um, you know, they could call this a field gun in some ways. It's a 75 millimeter gun." A little bit smaller than the average field gun. It's not really artillery. It's an assault gun. These are good on the attack. They can blow things to smithereens. Um, and they're motorized. Okay, so they can move with the panzers if you want to give the panzers more of a punch. Uh, so you'll see we've got a couple of those. Then we get to the pioneer battalions. Pioneers are engineers. If we look at their symbol, Okay, Pioneer Squad 39. You see this guy's throwing, he's got a flamethrower here. Uh, they're engineers. You're going to want pioneers with you when you attack urban areas, when you attack things with fortifications. They're very good at helping you take on fortifications. Uh, and those are the pioneers, the engineers. Now, I will tell you, engineer and construction are treated differently by the game. And we will go into that later in this episode. When I say treated differently, just the way that they're allocated out by the game is different. Uh, but it is no different that they are a support unit, okay? And they're they're brought in to buff up your existing divisions. Uh, the next type, Werfer Battalions. I like to think of Werfers, so let's go look at the, the Neville Werfer. Uh, this is a 150 millimeter one. Look at this son of a gun, right? I mean... Good Lord, talk about well, something that looks like a machine of death. Uh, and this fires rockets, all right? So I think of these, I think of rockets as being like artillery. They're not exactly like artillery. I like to, if I have 
a rocket unit or a rocket in this case battalion in a location i like to also have a traditional artillery piece there um, you know the rockets they can sometimes have a better range and less punch you just kind of have to you know check them out if you want to check them out down on this level if you don't and you just want to play up at this level treat them like artillery they're really like artillery in, in a lot of ways uh, the heavy warfers you know look at this thing just firing rockets out of that thing like crazy um, and so that's the warfers and really those are the main types you know if I go down and talk about the subtypes you have straight up gun you have or what's called a gun uh, unit, gun battalion you see here. You have howitzers, you have mortars. Now we didn't see a mortar unit in here, but they're artillery. They're in the, in the bigger classification, they're artillery. So straight up artillery, straight up guns, howitzers, mortars, rockets, all right? All think of them as artillery. Then you have anti-tank, which are really the panzer joggers. Um, then you have AA, which are all the flak units. And again, remember, mixed means that they're that they're not only AA, they're also anti-tank. Okay. Um, you have ski units. <laughs> so as you get into winter, uh, you have some ski units that are out there that you can attach to probably up in the north. You would want those ski units. Um, you have sappers. You have some that are tank units that actually have, they're just a battalion of tanks that you can use to punch up or a punch above your weight in some of your divisions. Uh, let's go look at 13 Corps. What do they have? Well, they just have two construction. Um, you know, as I look around at these headquarters, just looking for different things. You've got artillery, gun, flak, pioneer, and then you have three construction battalions. All right. Um, I just like, I, I want you to see a, a wide cross section. This only has a construction battalion. Now this leads me to a point that I'm gonna make uh, even stronger a little later, which is the game at the start, these things are spread out in really weird, bizarre ways. Some units, uh, some headquarters, I should say, they all start at headquarters units, okay? So none of these support units is directly attached to any divisions at the start. They all start either at the core headquarter level. So here's the 10th core. 10th core's got a lot. It's got two guns, artillery, howitzer, heavy howitzer, another howitzer, a mixed flak, a stug. Um, so that's the 10th. What? I don't want to bore you with this, but I also want you to see a wide cross section of these headquarters and what they've got. So here's the two core. Two core, you know, has got a bunch of engineers. It's got a bunch of howitzers, some guns, etc. Okay. Um, I was about to make a very important point. Oh, what I was saying is they're not efficiently distributed at the start. Some headquarters have a bunch of them. Um, and some have hardly any at all. Another thing I wanted to show you is they're up at the army level too. So here's the 18th army. 18th army has, you know, quite a few. You see, we have machine gun battalions. That's one that I haven't mentioned, but that of course is probably gonna go with an infantry unit. Um, and you can get down here and see rifle squad 39, or you can see uh, it's got an anti-tank rifle in it. Uh, so these machine gun units can also do some anti-tank. It's got mortars. These are, you know, they're support units. They come in and they help what you've got. Um, so they're at the core level. They're at the army level. They're at the army group level. Now, I don't think Army Group North has many, but it's got uh, a gun battalion, a flak battalion, and a construction battalion. Uh, and even OKH, whoops, I just moved Army Group North. That's all right. Even OKH has some flak battalions, all right? And so every headquarters can contain these. It's like a container where these support units reside, all right? Um, now, why are support units 
important how are they used okay i was going to say why are they important but i guess i just went through all that but how are they used well they are either attached directly to a division and you can attach up to three of these support units directly to a division so let's take a look at the 291st infantry division okay we'll look at that right now it's got a combat value of 10 all right now right now oh i had already attached that sorry before i started the game because i was messing around um you can assign and this is called the pull method all right the pull method is you can attach directly down here at the division level up to three support units and where did these come from so you can see available one one three three you know and you mainly see flak a uh, panzer jogger a bicycle recon battalion if you need, thought you needed that a machine gun battalion where do these come from where are these they can come from any headquarters up the chain from this division so here's its core headquarters all right and if we look at its core headquarters this is what it's got um it could come from its army headquarters here's the 18th army this is what it's got it can come from army group north which is the army headquarters commander it can come from here whatever it has or it could come from okh so if you trace back from this division from its core to its army to its army group to okh you can pull down to that division anything that's in that chain of command any support units that are contained in that chain of command with a caveat you can never directly attach artillery to a division um really the main things you can attach to a division are anti-tank and anti-aircraft you can never pull all the way to the division level artillery artillery or rockets okay and the reason that is is because that's just not really historically how it was done um, on the eastern front in world war ii artillery and rockets really were directed from the core headquarters or the army headquarters uh, they had gotten good enough at that point that you didn't really have them uh, being directed at the division level they were directed at the core and the army level and so you cannot pull artillery all the way down to the division level and we'll see that when we click on this and we hit assign we can go and look again it's all going to be anti-tank anti-aircraft engineers and this machine gun battalion you've only got a few of these so you know i didn't call it a major category but there are a few out there that will help something like this which is an infantry division uh, out here um, so this is how they're used you can either attach them directly to divisions and let me tell you i seldom if ever do that now you can and i know players that do it religiously because they want exactly the support units they want with each division and so they attach them directly but the other way that these support units can help you in battle is they can be directed or committed to battle as long as they're at a headquarters within five hexes of this unit so if or of this battle let's say that so as long as this uh infantry division is let's just let's just have an attack right here okay so we'll just do a, a an attack really quickly we'll pause now we'll go through all of this when we do the combat unit uh episode but for now it's the 291st division okay we completely wiped the enemy off the map by the way it's just good oh no we routed it here it is it's it's routed out what i call routed out it's like whoa let's get out of here i didn't see it for a minute but there it is it's routed uh but that's not important for what we're doing here the 291st infantry division that's what we attacked with okay great that's it right nope actually our headquarters our core headquarters said hey 
we're going to also commit the bicycle recon battalion the gun battalion the other gun battalion the panzer jogger battalion and the pioneer battalion it gave us five battalions uh to come support our attack and that's why they're called support units they come and help and you'll always see them listed here <clears throat> and as long as it's within five hexes a headquarters can send you support units so i can you can probably already figure this out probably the most efficient and flexible way to deal with support units is to keep them at the core headquarters or the army headquarters if you think you're going to keep your army headquarters pushing pushing with the cores but really i keep most of mine at the core headquarters and we're going to talk about how to do that um, as we go along here but so you can but you can now we could have attached these individually to this division up to three of them oh i should back up the maximum number of support units that can be committed to a battle is six uh, no matter where they're coming from whether they're coming from your core headquarters your army headquarters any other eligible headquarters the most that can be committed for one battle is six and that's just you know a, a game mechanic right they don't want you to have 26 support units that are you know three times as big as the actual division that they're supposed to be quote unquote supporting so they limit you to six all right but as i said the game will do this for you it will commit these units and i think that this is what causes a lot of confusion for people is they it, it's a hybrid manual and automated system all right the reason it's manual is because one you could attach them directly to these uh, divisions and also you're going to be deciding how to get these support units to these core headquarters or the army headquarters or the army group head wherever you want them to be you're going to decide how to get them there manually but once battle is going to take place the automated system takes over and the game will try to automatically commit support units that it thinks you need okay um let's talk about another difference here when things are directly connected to a division they are always automatically committed to the combat and so if you put uh, the flak um, now we can't do gun or whatever but we could have done the bicycle recon uh, panzer jogger and the pioneer we could have attached those three now we can't do artillery that's always going to be automated from the headquarter level but we could have attached these other three right when you do that they are automatically committed to whatever battle this division gets in okay but they're not usable by any of the other so if we look at this headquarters oh let's get out of this sorry um, when we look at this headquarters you know it commands three different cores if we directly connect those three battalions to this division they cannot help these divisions so by keeping them back here at the headquarters you provide a lot of flexibility uh, the artillery for well you couldn't directly attach the artillery but just as an example of the flexibility is by having the artillery back here at the core headquarters it can help with this attack and then if these units attack they can help here as well so let's do another attack and let's see what shows up and you're like oh wait a minute the the bicycle recon unit showed up again <laughs> you're like how's that possible well again remember the game is modeling one week turns so this turn one is one whole week you know this the bicyclists went out here and they reconned and then the headquarters said actually we need you to ride over here and recon as well okay and so it provides you a lot of flexibility this automated system and that's why i don't often directly attach to divisions with a few notable exceptions okay um what is one of the downsides to having these at the headquarter level 
Well, the main downside, or some would say it's a very big downside, is it has to, the, this headquarters and your leader, uh, in this case, Wadrig, has got to pass a command check to get those support units down here. All right. So it's very possible. I say it's very positive. It's not, you know, with the Germans, you have much better commanders. Uh, with the Soviets, this is a bigger problem. But it's possible that you could do this attack and the headquarters fails its leadership check and no support units show up for you. All right. And so that's the downside of having them back here and not directly attaching them. Now, remember when I said it's directly attached, they're always committed to battle. Um, you can't say that when they're at the headquarters level because they may not pass the leadership check and then they're not automatically committed, obviously. If they're down here at the division, they are. They automatically, you know, it's not as if there's even a check. They are going to be into the battle with the division. And that's why some people like to micromanage down to this level and to attach exactly the support units they want with this level. Now you cannot do that with artillery, so you're kind of, you're stuck with that, right? It's gonna be, uh, your commanders are gonna have to pass their checks to get artillery involved. Um, so we were talking about the pull method. And the pull method, there are two different methods for allocating where your support units are. So let's talk about the pull method first. And when I think of these two different methods, I think of the pull method working from the bottom up. And then the second method of doing it is the push method, which I think of operating from the top down. Okay, so let's talk about the pull, pull method again. This is our 291st. The pull method always works the same. You go to assign, you look over here at what your choices are. All right, these are the only choices you have to pull them down here to the division level. All right, and it will tell you how many there are. Now, when you're doing the pull method, you cannot select the specific SP flat company that you want. You may say, well, wait a minute, what? aren't they all the same? They're not all the same. They all have different morales. Uh, maybe not right at the start, but eventually they will. They'll have different morales, different experience. Uh, maybe they filled out their TOE more or less. Okay, and so they do start to differ as you go on. The other thing with the pull method is the way it works is if you hit SP flat company like that, now we're down to two, it will pull it from the highest command possible. And so if this was at OKH, back up its command structure, this is gonna come down from OKH. It will always go look for it at the highest command level that it exists, okay? So if that one was at OKH, and then the next one's at Army Group North, let's say, uh, there's no more at OKH, I'm just making this up, but I'm not sure if it's true or not, and that's part of it with the pull method. You don't really know where these are coming from, except that they're coming up from, they're coming from higher up the chain. So let's hit it again. And let's just say that one, there was one at Army Group North. There was also one at our core level. And there was one at the 18th Army level. It'll go get the one from Army Group North. It always pulls from the highest command. All right. Now, so we've now attached those, and you see them down here, units attached. And when you are attaching them to a division, this is always where you'll see it, right over here. We can do up to three. And as a matter of fact, let's pull the machine gun battalion, and you'll see it'll click me out of that screen, because that's it. That's, that's all we can do is attach three. And you say, well, what, what is this asterisk? This asterisk, Asterisk means this has been pulled down for this turn. You could not move these again, okay? You told headquarters, I need these three. They sent them to you. You could not now then click on them and try to move them somewhere else. That's all that asterisk means. They are still available. Uh, they are available for combat this turn. So if you move, if you hit something, you know, if you want to, oh, I say you hit something, if you attack something, they are available. You know, this does not mean unavailable. It just means you can't move it again. That's all. Um, and the pull method works 
for every chain link up. So let's go to our core headquarters here, the 26th, right click here. Now see, it's you may say, well, where is it? Where It's not over here. For headquarters, it's over here, right? And that's what I was saying before. We can click on this and see attach units, the three units it commands, and attach support. These are all the support units that are sitting in this container that we call the core headquarters, all right? All of these, this core headquarters can commit out to its divisions as it sees fit, but you can also fill this up as much as you want. Um, and you do that through this assign button again. So it's always a sign if you want to bring them down. Now we have more options. Why is that? Because we can bring artillery down to the core headquarter level. Now we cannot bring it to the division level, but we can bring it to headquarters units. Uh, and so we'll see one of the command headquarters above us has a gun battalion. Let's go figure out where, where that is while we're at it. Here is the 18th Army. Um, does it have the gun battalion? No, it does not. It would be listed on top. Let's go to RB Group North. And there's that 531st gun battalion. So when we go back to this headquarters, Army Group, you know, it's in the chain of command of Army Group North. We'll look at this again. We'll go to assign. We can pull a gun battalion. Now, if this is all we looked at, we wouldn't really know where it's coming from. We would just know it's coming from the highest command that actually has one of these. So we would click on gun battalion. Now it's in our core at our core headquarters, and it can be used for any combat that it wants to commit. And that's the automated system. It will decide, the game, when I say it, the game will decide how to commit that artillery. If we right click here, you'll see that 531st Gun Battalion, it's got that asterisk because we've already moved it once this turn. You cannot move it again until next turn, okay? And we can keep doing that all the way up the chain. That is the pull method. You can do it over here. So let's say the 16th Army, we think it needs some stuff. It's already got, you know, some stuff. Uh, it, this is not really a great distribution. It's got two artillery. It's got, you know, some flak, some mixed flak. Okay, whatever. Um, but let's say that we want to pull more down here. Uh, we're kind of, that, that's slim pickings right there, right? Um, but all of the things that it had, we could go down to the core headquarters here, right click, assign. We could pull from that army headquarters artillery if we wanted some, some anti-aircraft if we wanted some, okay? Now, that is the pull method. You're pulling support units down the chain, down the chain. So anything that's above well, starting with this division to the core headquarters, the division can pull down, not artillery, but uh, most of the other items, it can pull down attached directly. This headquarters can pull down from the army headquarters. The army, well, not only that, it can pull down from the army headquarters and the army group headquarters and OKH. It can pull from anything above it in the command chain. That is the pull method. Let's talk about the push method. Okay, which is the, I, again, I think of the pull method as bottom to the top. I think of the push method as top to the bottom. And why is that? Well, let's go to OKH here for a second. So let's remember 16th Army, right? For some reason that looks blurry to me. Maybe my eyesight's getting bad. Uh, let's go to OKH. Let's look, well, that's not a good example. Now we pulled everything out of there. Let's go to Army Group North. Uh, we pulled everything out of there. Let's go down to the center. We've pulled too many things out of these guys. Uh, let's go to Army Group Center. Oh, gosh, of course. Okay, the 555th Flat Company is the only thing sitting at Army Group Center as a support unit. Okay, let's click on it. Great. 
it says its headquarters is Army Group Center. Okay, let's click on that. We can now assign it to anything that is down the chain of command from Army Group Center. Not only that, we can assign it to things that are up the chain, and we can assign it to things that are sideways on the chain. <laughs> so, but you're, you're really going to want to try to avoid that because anything that is not in its direct chain of command, so Army Group South, for instance, is not in the direct chain of command for Army Group Center. Of course not, right? Uh, it's just not in its chain of command. But you could send it to Army Group South, but it's going to cost you an administrative point. All right. So it starts to cost you if you go sideways on the chain of command or up the chain of command to OKH. But if you're going down Army Group Center's chain of command and it commands all of these things, 4th Army, the 6th Corps, the 9th, these are all part of Army Group Center. All the things you see here with zero are all part of Army Group Center. You can push them down so it's the push method to it you can push this support unit to any of them so what is this the 555th let's put it down to the fourth army headquarters zero admin points were used okay let's go look at the fourth army headquarters which is right here the fourth army right click and there you see it the 555th uh flat company so, so that is the push method, and you can do that from every headquarters. You can push these things down. So let's go to the Fourth Army. Whoops. Let's go to the Fourth Army. You see all of these different um, support units that it has. Let's say, okay, so <clears throat> let's get off that for one second. Um, sometimes it's hard to keep track of exactly where these headquarters are. There it is. There's the 4th Army Headquarters. Let's zoom in a little bit. And you can see all of the different headquarters it commands. So let's look. This is the 9th Corps, okay? So let's go back here. Let's right-click. Let's say we think the 9th Corps and the divisions underneath it meet, need more artillery support. So we're going to give it some layer howitzers, okay? Click on layer howitzer. 4th Army? Nope. We're going to send it down. To the ninth core it's going to cost us nothing you can push these down the chain as long as it's in its chain um, if you try to get it outside of the chain you can do it but it's going to cost you admin points so let's send it to the ninth core great get out of that we'll go look at the ninth core right click and there it is the layer howitzer now it's down on this level and when any of these divisions go into battle, they could get the benefit of that if this headquarters decides, the AI decides, that they need more artillery support. All right. So you're in some ways a little bit beholden to what the AI wants to do. Um, but be that as it may, uh, it generally does a pretty good job. Now you can push all the way down if you wanted to. Um, you know, this artillery battalion, um, you could, I, I'm sorry, you cannot push all the way to the, to the division level. So once you get here to the core level, if you're doing the push method, as far down as you can go is the core. You could not go to the division level. You would have to go to the division itself, right click, assign, and pull them down there, okay? Um, now, of course, you can't do it with artillery anyway. Uh, well, that actually brings up a good question. Could we have done it with flak? Let's try to do it with flak. No, you can't go all the way. With the push method, you cannot go all the way to the individual divisions. They have to actually attach it themselves through the pull method. So they would pull it out of this headquarters. You can only push down to the core headquarter level. And that's the two main ways of doing this. Now you may say, holy smokes, that's going to take a lot of work. Well, um, you don't have to micromanage it. Uh, I know that a lot of people 
that play this game religiously, that love this game, um, love to micromanage these things. But you could play this game and never really worry about this except for the first few turns, okay? Because they, the developers have set up an automated system to do this, all right? So turn one's not a good example because in turn one, there is no quote unquote logistics phase. There is, we're in the action phase right now. If we wanna attack this thing, we can. If we wanna attack that, boom. I mean, we're already in the action phase. And as you see, we had howitzers, artillery. It sent a lot of support units for that little unit right there, uh, all from the, its, its headquarters. It's within five hexes of it. This headquarters says here, here's a bunch of support units. You know, blow the crap out of that Soviet Union unit, and the game will do that itself. But anyway, back to the point, which is um, you don't have to micromanage them if you don't want to. Now, you may get to a point where you want to, but you don't have to. And the way that you can get around micromanaging them is this thing called support level. And what does support level mean? There is an automated system. So I, you know, sometimes I start to talk about something and then I go off in a different direction. When I was talking about the logistics phase, so right now we're in the action phase, but when the turn resolves itself, when it goes to turn two, there is a logistics phase. And during that logistics phase, the AI, the computer, will try to match this support level in each of the headquarters. So that's a core headquarters. We can go to the army headquarters. You can see support level. We could go to, you know, army group center, support level. Now, what the heck is that? What that is, is an automated way to tell the game how many support units of each type that you want contained at this headquarters, all right, that you want attached to this headquarters. So right now we have a support level one. The game will try to give you one of each type of support unit to attach, okay? Uh, if you did level two, support level two, it will try to get two of each type into this headquarters. So you may say, well, why don't I put this at a thousand, right? So because this one headquarters would, well, if you put them all at a thousand, it's not gonna do any good, right? What you're doing is giving the game priority of where these things should go. So you may, if this core headquarters is really in the thick of battle and you want it to have a lot of artillery, a lot of pioneers, a lot of stugs, whatever you, you know, if you want it to have a lot of that, now it's not going to be precise, right? Because you can't set a support level for each different type. This is just general. It's going to try to pull two of every type here. But, you know, if this one's in the thick of the battle, you may want this to be four. And if something's way back at the back, not doing anything, you may want it to be one or zero, right? Um, and that's what add and sub is and what support level is. Whatever support level you set the headquarters to, and it's every headquarters in the game, whatever you set that to, that's how many support units the game is going to try to give you of each type, all right? Now what's lock? Once you have things the way you like them at the core level, you can hit lock and these will no longer move around. So at the logistics level, what happens? You may, let's back up for a second. Let's set the support level at one, all right? Well, if this support, when the turn resolves, if this support level is at one, and the game comes here and says, oh shoot, we have two howitzers. Uh, we also have some artillery, a gun, whatever. But, but the player has told me it only needs one of each. It's gonna take any excess and move it up the chain one level. So anything that's excess here will go to the fourth army headquarters. So its headquarters unit, it will move up one level to the fourth army. 
when it goes to the whoops when it goes to the fourth army let's go to the fourth army right click it's going to look at its support level well this support level is zero so it's going to look at this and say oh well it does you know the player is telling me it doesn't want any support units in this uh, headquarters unit so i'm going to send them all up to army group center which is its headquarters right and it will do that all now these can only move one headquarters up each turn but by turn three or four they're all going to be up at okh if you set these all at zero because these headquarters units will not hold on to them they'll pass them up the chain because you've told the game i don't want any i don't want this headquarters unit to have any support uh, units why would you do that well let's just take this army unit right or this army headquarters it's probably not going to be within five hexes of any particular battle once we get out here and so if you have artillery here and whatnot it's really not doing you a whole lot of good uh, and so you would want it down at the core level so you may set this at zero and set the core level at two because during that same logistics phase, it would go, um, it takes all of the excess and sends it up, but then it also looks at the needs and sends it back down, all right? So, you know, let's say the fourth army, it's set on zero, but it's gonna get some from its, head, its core headquarters. And let's say one of the cores says I need two, and one of the cores says I need zero. So from this core, it's gonna send everything up to the fourth army, but the fourth army is gonna say, but this core needs another one or another two. So there's, it, it backs up and then it fills. So it's excess goes up, needs go down, all set on the support level. And after a couple of turns, then your headquarters are gonna have the number that you've specified unless it just doesn't have enough so i said i think i said earlier that uh, the flam and the flam panzers which are just fire breathing tanks there's only three battalions of that it's not going to be able to send a battalion of that no matter what your support levels are to each and every you know even army headquarters right it could maybe send one to army group north army group center army group south but that's it. I mean, there's only three. So you are, you know, held in check by that. It can only go, it can only send things out that you actually have. So with that said, let's talk really quickly. So we've talked about the pull method from the bottom, the push method from the top. All right. And it's all about getting these things where you want them. So I'm going to talk about the ideal setup and the way to start the game and how most every, you know, advanced player of this game sets things up and how they do it. But first of all, I just want to take like a few minutes and talk about construction battalions and engineer battalions. They are run on a different system in some respects. And that is that this support level doesn't matter for them. So you see construction and labor all right, pioneer. This support level being on zero does not matter at all for construction and engineers. They are run on a different system that I'll just say in a big general overall sense, aggregates them mainly at army groups, army group north, army group center, and army group south. And why is that? Because especially for the construction and labor uh, battalions or groups their main job is is fixing railroad behind the lines and the game is going to do that automatically generally from your army groups although there will be, okay so at the army group level it's going to always have a support level for construction units of 16 so every Army Group North, Army Group Center, Army Group South are all going to try to get 16 construction units or battalions into their container, into their headquarters as attached, okay? And four engineers. So those try to 
and that's run no there's nothing you can do about that the game does that automatically because they are needed to repair what is called secondary rail uh, so you're going to have your railroad units and you've only got four of them you're going to have them going down the tracks fixing the main rail lines your army groups are going to be coming behind the headquarters and you'll see all of these construction units because they are the only support unit that is shown on the map you're going to see them all over the place like ants fixing railroad and that's really what they do now they can also help with fortifications but that's a little more of an advanced topic i just want you to know generally that engineers and construction are not beholden to this support level they have their own support levels. At the Army Group level, it's 16 construction, 4 engineer. At the Army level, it's 3 construction, 3 engineer. At the core level, it's 2 and 2. At the high level, the OKH, it's nothing. They don't have any construction units that, that are in their you know headquarters container, so to speak. Um, I do want to mention also with Locke, if we were to lock things from this level at the army level so let's say we did one two and we actually uh, it doesn't even matter what the support level was let's just say we like what we have in here and we lock it every core below this every core headquarters also becomes locked and their units will not move up or down you have locked it from everything below this so if you lock at the core level it's just the cores and the divisions are locked if you lock from the army level okay you get the idea right army group level every army underneath that army group is also locked so when you lock these just keep that in mind you're locking everything below them so how in practice how practically does this all work all right I would say almost every good player I've seen play this game does it sort of the same way. Um, and we're going to start at the commander's report. Now, if you ever want to see all of the support units in the game, so this is the commander's report. It's all units. The axis at the start has 1,197 units. Let's go down. All of these green, you can see they're BN for battalion. All of these green units are support units. And ironically, they are the most numerous units in the game, even though you never see them on the map. It's kind of crazy, right? Um, but they are going to get attached to these other things. And so you see the 18th Army has all of these support units underneath it, and so on and so forth. You can go on here forever and look at them if you ever want to fi figure out hey where are my flamponzer uh, battalions you can come here and find them um, you know there are a ton of these battalions companies and regiments the problem is is at the start of the game as i mentioned they are very inefficiently distributed around the map some as you and you can even see it just right here the two core for whatever reason has all of these and meanwhile the 10 core has very little it has two construction battalions and three artillery battalions it has no anti-aircraft no anti-tank no nothing right so what we have to do at the start is to get all of these out of the cores they're currently in now you may say well i don't want to do that because uh, you know, in the first turn, I need to attack. I need all of these things. This will happen. You're going to give the commands, but it's going to happen after the first turn. As I said, we're in the action phase. Everything that we're going to do here would happen in the logistics phase that happens before turn two. So when you click next turn, that's when all of this is going to happen. So don't worry like, oh, I'm not going to have any support units available on turn one if I do this. Nope, they're all going to be right where they are right now for this action phase that we have going on now. What we're going to tell them to do here in a moment is only going to happen after we uh, after turn one is resolved. And then when turn two starts, we're going to be able to start 
doling them out where we want them to be. So the main inefficiency is how they're distributed to the core headquarters, okay? They're sort of even between, uh, well, they're a little inefficient up to the Army level, but then once you get up to Army Group South, or Army Group Center, Army Group North, you know, they all kind of have a similar number of support units underneath them. Um, but at the core level, they're just inefficient as can be. So how can we fix that? Well, we've got to pull them all out of the core level. Uh, as I said, now, I may be confused you earlier because I showed one where it was attached to a division. I had done that. At the start of the game, there are no support units that I'm aware that are directly attached to divisions. So they are all at the core headquarter level. Okay. Um, now you see up here, we have got support level. It'll tell you what the support levels are. Um, but let's go to headquarters, all right? Because we know all of the support units are currently located in headquarter units. And what are we going to do? Well, let's go to support level here. And let's set every headquarters in the game for the Axis side to zero. All right, we've got 131 headquarters from OKH all the way down to the core level. We're going to set them all to zero. And as you look here, every single support level in the game now is zero. As a matter of fact, let's get out of here uh, because I had been, you know, just playing around with this before we started. And I want to show you exactly what it looks like the first time you go to the commander screen because I had already messed around with that a little bit. Let's go back to the commander screen. Um, you know, again, it, this is all the same, but let's go to the headquarters and you'll see here support levels, uh, ones and zeros, some have twos. Uh, the beta patch of the game kind of changed how these are set up at the start, how many each uh, unit has or each headquarters unit has. But you see there's some ones, there's some twos up here. All right. The first thing we're going to do is hit support level and hit zero. That is going to change all of these to zero and you can see that now they are all zero okay so we're telling the game do not hold any support units at any of these headquarters well that doesn't do us much good right because the game's going to kind of freeze them then because nobody wants any support units so what are we going to do from there well let's filter this we'll hit none and then we'll go up here to high command so now we're we filtered it for high command We've got the German High Command, the Italian High Command, the Finnish, the Hungarian, Romanian, Slovakian. These are the five, I can't count. These are the six Axis High Commands, okay? We are going to hit support level again, and we're going to hit them all to nine. And you say, uh, what? What are we doing? What we are doing is we're drawing, we're drawing all of the support units up a level after turn one. So all the ones that are in headquarters, in core headquarters, are going to be at army headquarters. All the ones that were at army headquarters, again, it, we're telling the game those are zero, zero, right? All the ones that are army headquarters are going to be at army group headquarters. They're all going to move up one chain. Why are we doing that? The reason we're doing that is to get them out of the core headquarters because they're inefficiently distributed all over these core headquarters. Some have 20, some have two, okay? So we're pulling them all back one level. And you may say, oh crap, so on turn two we can't attack. Wrong. Bef when you get into the next turn, turn two, you're gonna be able to either push or pull those down back to the core headquarter level in whatever way you want. So as an example, let's say in that fourth army, the blue here is the fourth army. Let's say that one core of the fourth army has 20 and one core of the fourth army has two support units, okay? All 22 of those are gonna come back to the fourth army for the start of turn two. So when it goes through the logistics phase, it comes back here. It will be sitting here at the start of turn two. Now at the start of turn two, you could either push 
by reassigning the headquarters, or you could pull by coming down here. Now you may not necessarily get them out of the fourth. It may be out of the out of army group center, but for these purposes, let's just say for the pull, they're all coming out of the fourth. You can then assign 11 of the support units to this one and 11 to this one. So instead of having 20 and two, where this one maybe has no flak, no artillery, no engineers, and this has all of them, it's gonna come back to the army level and then now they can both have 11 for turn two. And just because you move them in a turn, you can still use them. You just can't, you know, or the headquarters can commit them. Uh, you just can't move them again. That's the only restriction, but they can be used in battle. Now, I will say that I think that most people that, you know, play this uh, at a high level maybe wouldn't do that necessarily on turn two to redistribute them. They would do it before turn three when they get back to the army group level because you do have certain armies that have quite a few more support units uh, than other armies. So let's just take, you know, in the north, you've got the 16th and the 18th, okay? It goes back. So the 16th, let's say, pulls 32 and this pulls 16. The 18th pulls 16 support units. This pulls 32. That's still really unevenly distributed. You would want them to get to Army Group North, and then you can push them back down the chain. Now, one thing to keep in mind with that is then you would have a, t a, a problem in turn two if they're all up here and you don't reassign them in turn two. You waited till turn three they're gonna be getting too far away from the front to be committed to battle. So you would, on turn two, want to start giving some of your core headquarters a few things, okay? And distribute them out, and then any excess will go back, all right? So let's say that you don't want to manually control these things like that. I would say do exactly what I'm doing here. Pull them back first, so the game gets a big number of them. And then on turn two or three, this is what I would do. I would make sure if you wanted to do this, you know, let the game really handle this. You don't want to micromanage all of this. On the start of either turn two or turn three, I would go to each core headquarters, okay? And I would right click and I would say, how many attached units are there? There are three divisions, all right? I'm gonna set its support level to three. And I would do that with every core headquarters. How many ever major units it's commanding, I would keep uh, the attached units three of each type. This way you have three artillery piece, you know, artillery support units um, in that core headquarters. And it could, if it needed to, just push out one at least to each division. Now that's not really what it would do. It would probably do two when this attacks, maybe two when this attacks, and maybe all three when this attacks. Uh, but at least, at the very least, you have one for each division. So I would set that support level to three. And then as you go back, what you're gonna wanna do after turn two, if you want this all to be on the automated system, is you're gonna put OKH at zero. You would probably put Army Group North at zero or one at the most. You would probably put the Army here at one or two. And then you would try to keep them all down here for the most part at the core level by setting that at three. So the game is continually trying to pull three of each type down to the core level, all right? So I think that's a, a pretty good overview of how support units work. Uh, I get, you know, this is the kind of episode you may have to watch a couple of times, or watch, watch, listen to, whatever you're doing a couple of times. Uh, maybe something you have to actually start the game, and I think it'll start to become very apparent how you move these things around or how they do move. Again, I'm telling you, if you don't want to micromanage these, you can have a good time with this game. You can play the game very well. It's not going to be as efficient if you're only using these support levels, 
uh, but it's also not going to be, you know, it's not going to be like you can't play the game if you're not getting down to the individual, you know, I want the Werfer, that Werfer battalion to go here. You don't have to get down to that level. There is an automated system in place that can help you there. It's just not quite as exact. If you're a super micromanager or you get to a really advanced level with this game, I can tell you, you are going to want to think about individually attaching things to divisions and also exactly the makeup of your support units at the core level, the army level, the army group level. But that will come at time. in time. I will tell you when I play the game, how I play it is this. I uh, will attach um, anti-aircraft, one anti-aircraft motorized to each one of my panzer divisions and also to my panzer headquarters. Why is that? Because they get way out in front of everything and if the Soviet Air Force wants to bomb them, there's nothing. They have no defense. Okay, so you need to keep anti-aircraft with your panzers, at least one motorized support unit uh, with each panzer group. Okay, I say panzer group, panzer division, panzer corps, Panzer group, you want to keep anti aircraft with all of them. Uh, preferably, of course, motorized. It's going to take you more vehicles if they're not motorized. Uh, with infantry divisions, um, you cannot directly attach artillery. So for core headquarters uh, at the infantry, you know, that are infantry, I like to have at least three artillery in there, at least one Stug, at least one Pioneer at least one or two anti-aircraft that can be doled out as the game sees fit, all right? Uh, I should mention very quickly that air headquarters, uh, you cannot attach, first of all, you cannot attach support units to air bases, and I know we haven't done the air section yet, but you cannot attach them directly to air bases, but you can attach anti-aircraft to uh, Flieger Corps, which are the headquarters of air bases. Works the same way. This is like a core level base. You can do a sign, and as it goes up the ranks, it'll look for flak that you can directly attach to this. I would also highly recommend you always attach a flak unit or two to uh, your air headquarters. Um, just keep, you don't want those headquarters getting bombed. Same with your major headquarters, like army headquarters. Always try to. Uh, at least have one directly attached anti-aircraft. It just makes sense, right? Think about the Soviets coming in with planes and attacking your uh, headquarters, and you have no planes and no anti-aircraft. I mean, at least with the air uh, headquarters, you should have some aircraft around, uh, but some of these infantry headquarters, they may be way out here, out of range of the Luftwaffe. So you want to keep some anti-aircraft. That's really the one to think about uh, when it comes defensively is that uh, with anti-tank, you know, any infantry divisions really that may come under tank attack, you want to make sure you have some anti-tank in there. Um, any uh, attacking units, you know, th these early in the game, all of the German units are essentially attacking units. The more artillery, the better. Anything over three or four artillery pieces or artillery support units in a core headquarters is kind of overkill, though, uh, because it can only commit up to six support units to any one battle. Just always keep that in mind. All right, I think uh, we've done the best we can to cover this. If you have any questions, you want to talk about this, leave comments, let me know. Uh, you know, we can hash this out. I get that this is a somewhat complicated topic, uh, but really it does all make sense once you start to get used to it. Uh, so just let me know. Uh, for Strategy Gaming Dojo, thank you as always. Uh, if you enjoyed this, give me a subscribe, give me a like, give me a comment, talk to me. Uh, let's, uh, let's figure this out so that you enjoy and understand the game. Till next time, I'll talk to you later. Strategy Gaming Dojo, bye.